So followed from fly ash we have silica fume. Now silica fume as you can see from this diagram this is the open furnace, this is a stack through which the fume goes out and this is collected here C there is a fan right uh, D is a fan which blows it and uh, here basically the fumes that comes in which condense to ambient temperature this is at hot this is around 2 to around this degree Celsius and then this is at ambient temperatures. So, E is that they are filtered and collected the fine ones are collected. So, that is silica fume. Uh, if you look at production energy typically this will be kilojoules per kg you know for 1 kg you will need 372 total energy required. We have seen earlier that uh, 0.142 multiplied by 0.4 and something etcetera etcetera, but total energy required would be because there are grinding energy there are uh, you know others some 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 of the fuel energy is also recovered then uh, you know uh, there is there's, there's, there are many other total energy that is if one accounts for them then you get something like relatively you can see that this 372. If you are producing lime that is calcium oxide from calcium carbonate from calcium carbonate to calcium oxide and actually carbon dioxide. So, this would be 173 and hydrated lime of course, you add some water 142 uh, burnt clay pozzolana rice husk ash because you have to burn them. So, uh, you have to actually initially heat them up ignite them etcetera etcetera so, using some fuel then you get 68 rice husk ash 12 some other burnt clay meta kaolin for example. Meta kaolin is kaolinite clay heated up to 600 to 700 degree centigrade right and then again cooled rapidly. So, this would need somewhat higher energy rice husk ash is this. Surki is a product coming from brick kiln clay bricks you know clay bricks you mold it heat it some dust is collected at the bottom which is again the heated up clay cooled rapidly. So, that also has a little bit something like rice cars as fly ash 0 because you are not heating it no process unless you process it use it in a classifier grind it or something you do not need really much energy. So, fine fly ash straight away you can use it directly and effectively uh, the amount of energy required is 0. So, therefore, you know you can see that where the sustainable life sustainable lies with fly ash. Generally these materials are characterized physical characterization and chemical characterization. So, physical characterization is grain size distribution these are important particle size distribution this is important fineness is very important finer it will react faster. And specific gravity is also important in the sense that specific gravity gives you how much volume because we you know the cement specific gravity ordinary potent cement clinker specific gravity is around 3.15 and it reacts with water which is specific gravity. So, this is cement OPC OPC this is your water and produces a product which might have a specific gravity much lower and therefore, this hydration product occupies the space occupied by water. So, this would be something of the kind of 2.45 2.4 or so 2.49 or 5 uh, if you do not if you if you you know if you take a, a, um, uh, uh, there are two types of pores in the cement system one we call capillary pores and another is gel pores. So, if you take gel pores the specific gravity would be you know of the the pores separated out it will be slightly different, but whatever it is if you take gel pores also as a part of the solid then this gets reduced because then obviously the air comes in. So, it becomes 1.78 or something of that kind. So, specific gravity of the hydration product is 2.5 right this is so therefore, if this product your pozzolana would have a specific gravity of 2.2 it reacts with water to forming a product. So, therefore, the volume changes are related to this specific gravity that is why specific gravity is important. How much solid volume will have after reaction supposing initially it was 2.2 and reacts with water and forms a product of the kind of 2.2 itself 
then or 2.3 or something it will occupy very little volume. But if its specific gravity is 3.15 initial volume was much small now it reacts with water and final solid specific gravity let us say is 2.5 or something it will occupy larger space. So, it will fill in the larger void space. So, this is also important specific gravity is important. Chemical composition this is loss on ignition actually indicate the carbon content and the carbon is not very good in the sense that they are flaky they absorb water and that is there are problem with them you know and that oxide composition sometime we would like to know because how much calcium oxide how much SiO2 etcetera we should like to know some sulfur dioxide trioxide also comes in. So, type F type, type C I was mentioning this comes from anthracite or subbituminous coal and this comes from lignite coal you know this comes from lignite or bituminous coal. So, they the in the coal they have two types of classification one is lignite coal other is uh, anthracite or subbituminous coal you know lignite and bituminous or bituminous this has got high calcium oxide this has got low calcium oxide. So, that is why and their performance is also different with cement system because this has got some lime right. There are other classification of course, several other classification based on carbon content and several others. So, we are not interested this has been most accepted type of classification. So, if you look at mineralogical classification I mean characterization x-ray diffraction which is another characterization then you will find that this is basically for you know you will have in case of different in x-ray diffraction basically what we do we find out the distance between you know it is related to the crystal planes right because x-ray as it passes through crystal right Bragg's law a coherent source and this pass from the top layer and this stuff passes from the top layer you in crystal plane then they will interfere constructively or destructively depending upon the path difference between the two this is Bragg's law right. So, what is done specimen is rotated at a different angle you see the intensities and that is what you are seeing degrees theta and this side is the intensities and you know this is for mulite this is one of the crystals this, this is for quartz this is called hematite is iron and magnetite is also iron you know iron oxide. So, these crystals you can see and therefore, what is the crystalline material present in the system you can find out this is for fly ash this is for fly ash and this bottom actually tells you how much is the amorphous material non crystalline the peaks indicate crystalline material and uh, you know bottom hump shows you how much is the amorphous material. Crystalline materials are relatively stable not necessarily all are stable they might get dissolved sodium chloride dissolves in water very easily therefore, reaction work, but generally crystalline materials are relatively more stable. So, if you look compare this for granulated blast furnace slug you find it is mostly amorphous you know there are no peaks high calcium fly ash is something like this right and uh, low calcium fly ash is something like this. So, the point that I am trying to make is GGBF is more GGBFS is granulated ground granulated blast furnace slag is more amorphous has contains more amorphous material than let us say fly ash. Cement has got of course, there are lot of uh, crystalline material available in cement right. Chemical composition wise this I have already said you know this I have already said, but what uh, now I want to say is this shape business shape is also important type F fly ash is spherical type C fly ash is also spherical because they are grinded and burnt. So, when you burn the coal the clay which is they are intermingled with the coal system right it will burn from all sides and in fact it might bloat and forms what are called sinospheres and things like that. So, they are spherical in nature because the process of production is such while ground granulated blast furnace slag because I am grinding it. So, when I grind something it will have sharp edges because they will fail in the failure planes. So, this is sharp edges while silica fume is very spherical again it is burnt product. So, glass content means amorphous content 10 to 40 percent this has got high glass content right. This has got very high glass content again right most of it is amorphous silica from quartz it has been produced. So, 
reactivity of this one is very high right this one has got lesser reactivity compared to this of course indian standard 3812 gives you specification of flyers right so that's what it is physical characteristics if you see i have added now this time rice has cash also because this is important it has got high clay about 80 85% sio2 also rice has cash also has got 80 80% also sio2 but important issue here is it is cellular its shape is cellular while this was spherical as i told you this was angular or sharp edges this is spherical metacaulin is platy so metacaulin is a burnt clay you know pozzolana you have heated up kaolinite clay to 600 700 degrees centigrade and cool it down rapidly you get platy specific gravities are somewhere here now this has got high specific gravity the reason is it has got lime lime has got higher specific gravity than sio2 system so it since it has got larger quantity of lime it tends to show more also there might be iron content might be more so this adds to the specific gravity of this one higher and if you see the particle size distribution silica film is the finest 0 1 you know and cements are class of flyers is somewhere here calcined clay like metacaulin is somewhere there so these are the pozzolanic material which have been used to reduce down the cement the clinker cement clinker that's how it is related to sustainability obviously their addition would not produce carbon dioxide right silica fume production there's no carbon dioxide i'm quartz i'm burning right and i'm getting it as a waste product silicon industry or ferro silicon industry would not have known how to use it but this is a highly beneficial product for cement concrete because you can make high strength concrete out of it very high strength concrete ultra high strength concrete out of that right so chemical reaction was this that's what i said 100 of this reacts with 185 of this to produce 285 so you know so calcium hydroxide in case of cement in case of cement if you are doing liberated calcium hydroxide you can show is around 2 point because we know that 100 grams of c3s produces 49 grams of lime you know from stoichiometry of cement reaction we know that c3s reacts with water whatever 6h2 or whatever it is to produce about 49 grams of calcium hydroxide so this is 100 grams this is around 21 22 grams and for 49 grams of calcium hydroxide ch plus how much it would be 75 or so 76 or 75 you know so this is this might be 21 or 22 you know 75 grams of chs but 49 grams of calcium hydroxide right and c2s the other compound major compound in cement which produces lime 100 grams of this reacts with about 24 grams of water h2o h if i may call it 24 again it produces around 22 grams of lime it produces lesser lime half nearly half as that one so so i know if my composition of the cement is known how much is the c3s how much is the c2s which i can calculate out from oxide composition calcium oxide silicon oxide how much it is i can calculate out or measure it better through various kind of techniques like even x-ray diffraction etc etc calculation is done by an empirical formula called boggs formula i'm not interested in this i'm not interested in your class about that but you can calculate out but this we know that cement produces lime so therefore how much ch is liberated from the unit mass of cement that is known so it is around 0.285 you know sorry this point, this is around 0.285 and one can actually calculate out how much you know how much lime is you know how much silica it can how much lime will be consumed in you know how much maximum lime i can consume for silica uh, how much silica i can consume for you know like 1.85 grams of lime produces 100 grams of silica so if i am producing 2.85 ch c stands for quantity of cement h is its degree of hydration proportion that is reacted so if c amount of cement i take c amount of cement i take let me say c amount of cement i take uh, it it would you know and it 
proportion that has hydra, hydra, reacted is H. So, C H is the amount of cement which has reacted from cement if C if C H is, is a cement C H is a amount of cement which has reacted it will produce 285 C H amount of uh, amount of line that I can find out from stoichiometry of cement reaction because I said 100 grams of C 3 S produces 49 grams of lime C H and 100 grams of C 2 S produces 22 you know approximately 21 or 22 grams of C H I think it is 21 or 22 does not matter. But in cement this will be around 55 percent and this will be around 20 21 percent right. So, therefore, if I take 100 grams of cement I will have about 55 grams of C 3 S I will have about 20 grams of 21 grams of C 2 S and 100 grams of C 3 S produces 49 grams of lime, 100 grams of C 2 S produces 22 grams of lime. So, 55 grams of lime will in if I take 100 grams of cement, if I take C grams of cement or C kg of cement then I can find out. So, C means if I take C kg of cement 0.55 C will be 0.55 C will be C 3 S. 21 C would be C 2 S right am I right and this produces C H has reacted. So, point C you know this is and this also is C H this much has reacted and we know 185 grams of you know like uh, sorry first of all. Uh, so, this should be multiplied by 0 0.49 this should be multiplied by 0 0.22 because you know 100 grams of C 3 S produces 49 grams of lime. So, if this is my C 3 S 0.5555 C H this multiplied by 0 0.49 would be the amount of amount of lime produced and if this is 0 0.2221 C H and this produces multiplied by 0 0.22. So, let us just look at the quick calculation part of it 0 0.55 C H multiplied by 0.49 plus 0.22 approximately these are uh, multiplied by uh, 0.21 let us say. If you sum this up how much does this come? It will come to somewhere around uh, somewhere around 0.2 something right 0.2 something 0.2 uh, this will be 20, 0.24 or 2, 285 or something of that kind you know that is what we said. So, approximately those amount of so CH I can actually find out how much 285 I my calculation showed it will be nearly same maybe some error here and there. So, it will be nearly same. So, basically no no 0 0.55 into 0 0.4 0 0.5 into 4 0 0.4 is how much 0.29. yeah 0.2 this will be 0 0.29. So, 0.55 into 0 0.49 how much is this or let us say 0 0.5 let me put it as this. So, this will come out as 0 0.2 right 27 roughly 0 0.27 it comes it comes out 0 0.2. So, it is 0.27 this amount is small 0 0.2 into 0 0.2 is 0 0.4 0 0.2 into 0 0.24 is 0 0.04. So, this is this is 0 0.27 no 0 0.55 into 0 0.5 let us say half of 0 0.55 roughly 0 0.27. So, it comes out to 0 0.285 around that you know because my values I have just often telling you. So, it will come out to be this that is what I am saying. So, the amount of lime produced is lime produced will be 0 0.285 CH I mean some near about values and 185 units of lime units of lime consumes consumes 100 units of silica. So, this 0.285 C H divided by 185 into 100 will be the amount of silica consumed will be the amount of silica consumed. How much does it come to? It comes to how much does it come to you know this how much does it come to actually how much does it come to if I if I 0.15 or so right that is what I was trying to say. So, therefore, this says that this says that you will have 0.15 CH silica consumed. Silica consumed. 
So, silica consumed is 0 0.15 CH, 0 0.15 CH. So, 0 0.15 CH is a silica consumed, right. So, if you have C, supposing now all cement reacts, then the value of H is 1, the value of H is 1. So, how much is the maximum silica that will be consumed? 0 0.15 C. So, only 15 percent of the, you know, 15 percent of the cement that will be the quantity of silica, maximum silica that can be consumed. If you add more silica than that, some of them will remain unreacted, right. Some of them will react, remain unreacted, right. So, for H equals to 1, 0.15 C, that is stoichiometric upper limit of silica consumption, stoichiometric upper limit of silica consumption, right. So, if you are using fly ash which has got around 55 percent silica, right. So, you know 55 percent silica, so that is fly ash, how much to quantity of fly ash? because fly ash quantity will be 0 0.55 divided by 0 0.15, right, because 15 percent, right. So, 15 percent that is the, if I have, so this will be how much about, how much is this uh, 0 0.15 uh, something like, uh, this will be how much uh, 0.3 something, 0 0.36, 0 0.36 or something, like yeah something like that. So, supposing I have got 55 percent silica in the fly ash, I can add about 35 percent fly ash, because 35, 0.35, 35 percent silica or 35 silica will have something like 0.15, you know something like so point, you know this, this will have point, it is 15 percent is still, you know 15 percent will be, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, if I take, if I take 35 percent, it is 55 percent is 0.55 is the amount of silica, 35 it is 55 percent will be amount of silica, right, and uh, uh, or 35 or 36, whatever it is, and that is the maximum that can be consumed because 0.15, I think I might have made some mistake somewhere. Uh, 0.15, I want to find out the so 100 fly ash contains, let us say, 55 percent silica, right, and uh, yeah, so uh, 55 percent silica. So, so, 0.55 silica in 1 unit of fly ash and in how much unit of fly ash I will have 0.15, you know 15 silica that is what I should find out. That is the quantity of proportion of the cement that you can use. So, uh, 155 by 100 into 0.15, I think that is what it should be. How much does it come to know? Is it correct? Hmm? Yeah, so 27. So, 27 is the amount of fly ash if you add, you will get 0 0.15 fly, you know silica, which can react with 100 cement, which can react with 100, you know 100 cement, that is what I am trying to say. So, this is a stoichiometric upper limit of fly ash that can be added or pozzolana or silica that can be added. If you are adding silica fume which has got 90 percent uh, uh, silica, you can add only about 15, 20 percent, slightly, I mean as, as good as 15. In fact, it is best to add only 10 percent of silica fume, 10 to not more than 15 percent, because it is rich in silica, everything is silica. So, if you add more, it does not go into the reaction system, it will remain as unreacted product, sometimes it is beneficial, so that is it. But one issue with this kind of materials, when you add to the cement to reduce your, improve your sustainability, they improve the microstructure in the long run, but their strength development is somewhat slower, except for silica fume, right and they lower the porosity and finer size pores should result and better strength you get in the long run. But initial strength is not so high because what you have done is you have actually replaced some percent of some percentage of the OPC by fly ash, right. So, it will have now OPC 70 percent let us say plus fly ash 30 percent. So, this will initially react, this does not react till the calcium hydroxide comes out from this. For its reaction, I need calcium hydroxide. Cement is C3S, C2S, etc. Only when it reacts, it produces calcium hydroxide. And this calcium hydroxide then can react. So, first my cement must react, then fly ash will react. So, it is, you know, inst instantaneously it is not going to react, while cement reacts relatively more instantaneously. The next aspect is even this reaction of pozzolanic reaction of S plus C H in presence of water to C S H 
This is a slow process. This itself is a slow process. So therefore, the moment you add some percentage of fly ash into your system of cement, the reaction rate is slower. It does not does not, but that reaction rate slower is fine, but it does not affect the solidification part, which we call setting. In concrete science, we call it setting. Setting is solidification. Hardening is strength gain. Hardening is strength gain, right? Hardening is strength gain. So, the moment you dilute out the OPC, reduce it down the OPC, strength gain, hardening process slows down. Setting is marginally affected, but significantly not affected, does not affect negatively to the system. So, that is what we are trying to look at how do all this material affect. So, in the long run, it improves, but later on, the flyer starts reacting and the water field space which was there originally, originally occupied by calcium hydroxide, now gets occupied by the CHS product and this improves the microstructure this improves the microstructure. So, calcium hydroxide is replaced by CHS because silica fume I am not silica fume I mean fly ash or similar sort of thing pozzolone oil react. But the thing is that calcium hydroxide CH has got a specific gravity of around 2.2 something fly ash has also got specific gravity of the same product is also of the similar specific gravity you do not find it does not occupy more volume only same space which was occupied by calcium hydroxide and silica, the product also occupies the same space because the specific gravities are similar. But this is a non sealing precipitate, it is a precipitate, it can dissolve and come out, right. So, leaching can occur, this can leach out. But when it forms this together with this, now it is a solid product, solid product and it will not leach out easily. It will get destroyed in the long run if you have calcium carbon dioxide from atmosphere coming and carbonation occurring in the long run you know million years so or thousand years at least it would take very long time inside the concrete to go and things like that. So, uh, what we see is early strength development differs from material to material they do not show high early strength pore filling effects, so, but some of them can feel the pore because strength is a function of porosity and pore sizes. Okay, we may look into something like this in this class or may not, we might have to do sometime, but we may not also. But we have seen that we know from concrete science we know strength is a function of porosity as well as pore sizes. This is our day to day experience also. You take a porous material, it breaks easily. And if you take a brick layer, say with a single large hole, but same brick with all the holes distributed all over the place, you will find that the one with the larger hole can be broken much easily. So, strength is a function of porosity and pore size and it can be explained from fracture Griffith's fracture concepts, but at the moment I am not interested. So, if the pore sizes are re reduced by pore filling effect and they are in between, they are bound by hydration product, they are not loose, then they can also show you strength improvement inert material supposing inert material has gone into the pores and bounded by binding material they will reduce also the pore. So, this is pore filling effect and some pore refinement means size reduction and reduction in the porosity. So, this is this is what happens with pozzolanic material pozzolanic materials. So, reactivity of fly ash develops slowly owing to larger size they are relatively larger size 5 to 150 micron compared to silica fume which is 1 to 5 micron and stability of glassy phase only in presence of sufficient CH. So, only in presence of sufficient CH they will actually react. The depletion of lime begins only after 10 to 14 days and indicating initiation of pozzolanic reaction. So, pozzolanic reaction occurs later. Silica fume can exhibit more pore filling effect right because very fine. So, it goes into the interstices of the cement itself. So, this, this is your C silica fume silica fume might go inside silica fume might go inside this right. So, silica fume might oh, oh this is the same color coming almost no no I want this color black yeah silica fume might go into the interstices of the cement itself it is so fine finer than cement that is what we have seen particle size distribution we are now looking at it is on to the right hand side. So, it goes into the interstices of the cement itself and if the cement is hydrating right in the beginning hydration products of cements are coming straight away let us say hydration products of cement is coming somewhere here, they will be 
already inside those hydration product system right hydration product system right so that's what that's what it is so they give you pore filling effect they give you pore filling effect and therefore they can show somewhat high early strength also so high early strength also so for identical grade it has been seen that 28 days composite strength of concrete mixes can be designed with very varying percentage of pozzolana with appropriate water to c plus pozzolana water to pozzol cement plus pozzolana ratio and pz being pozzolana content so is a you know is a percentage of pozzolana in p is we define as a percentage of pozzolana in total cement and you can talk in terms of equivalent uh, you know water to cementitious ratio as we call it so i can design now why did i say 28 day strength because character you know we we take the strength of concrete at the age of 28 days for structural design purposes so 28 day strength is taken so i can design system i'll uh, design system here so that 28 day strength is same for opc plus for fly ash and opc is somewhere here but initial strength will be lower it will be lower this gains strength but later on i can have higher strength so these materials can be used ggbf as behave similar so next class we we'll look into ggbfs and other material of the similar kind and all the purpose of this one is to cut down on the opc clinker because we have seen opc is the major you know in the cement concrete scenario after fossil fuel it is the major culprit for carbon generation carbon dioxide generation right so we'll take a half a minute if you have some questions we can answer otherwise we'll start from here in the next class